sounds the world consistently. Signs and wonders for the faithful. God's anointed me to preach and teach.
绿天来几根银枝。Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for bringing us to this workers' retreat. We know you have a plan. We know you have a purpose. A purpose that is greater than every individual. A purpose concerned about the kingdom of God. And therefore, Father, we pray that your purpose for the kingdom will be fulfilled through this workers retreat in Jesus name we're looking up to you Lord that you help us to realize that we have come here not just for ourselves we have come here to represent your church the body of Christ and we pray that you speak to every one of us as representatives of that body representatives of the local churches we belong to in jesus name and we pray O oh lord that all we need to receive not individually for ourselves or selfishly for ourselves but for the sake of your body you will give unto everyone for the body in jesus name and we pray O oh lord that you make us to hear what you want us to hear and at your word will so touch and transform our lives that we will become change agents to transform the lives of other people be with us lord help us to hear you as you speak in jesus name we pray i welcome you to the workers retreat and I want you to please note that this is indeed a workers retreat and a workers retreat is very very different from any other kind of gathering that Christians find themselves we come together because the Lord wants us to sharpen our spiritual iron the weapon we're using for the harvesting of the end time harvest that the lord himself has preserved before he comes and as you come you come one as a christian and god gives you the privilege that you are here as a christian number two you come because of the special privilege you have in the body of christ that god himself has placed you in the body not as a selfish isolated individual christian but as somebody that is serving the lord and needs to be better equipped in the service of the lord 
And tonight we are looking at a passage which is very relevant to our gathering together. It's in Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 17. Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 17. It says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, verse 18, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Those four verses of scripture are the verses of scripture we're going to consider tonight as we begin this workers' retreat. These are weighty words indeed, important words indeed. And many Christians have missed the content of these verses. And many people have also misinterpreted and misapplied what we have in those verses. Other people have misplaced their own emphasis on those verses we have read. And therefore they have not really sufficiently got what Jesus Christ was passing across to his own disciples. Let's start from verse 17. And the 70 returned. Stop there for a moment. There is a principle here that every believer, especially every Christian worker, ought to take care of. And the 70 returned. Whenever the Lord sends us to an errand, whenever he gives us a responsibility or a work to do, he expects us to go and do that work and then to return back to him. And as we return back to him, to give him a report of what we had done. Whether we had done everything according to the way he outlined or not. You will see this principle all through the scripture. In Mark, especially chapter 6. Mark chapter 6, verse 30. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things both what they had done and what they had taught again you will find out here jesus christ had sent out the twelve the apostles he sent them out to preach the gospel and also to minister to the needs of the people after he sent them out he himself did some work where he was and as they went they did what he told them to do you look at verse 12 of that chapter mark chapter 6 verse 12 and they went out and preached that men should repent in verse 13 and they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them it was at the conclusion of the work they had done not at the final conclusion because you know that they still continued ministering and they still continued following the Lord and even after Jesus rose from the dead and then he ascended to heaven they still continued the work in the acts of the apostles but they had finished a phase of the work the first phase of the work and so they gathered themselves in verse 30 unto him and they told him all things that they are done and all things that they are taught and this gives us a principle that we have been doing some work for the kingdom some work for the lord and now we come to this workers retreat and we return unto the lord not for ourselves but to make a report unto him a part of the work had been done a phase of the work had been completed and we now come to the Lord in this workers' retreat to re-examine all that we have done, everywhere we had gone, 
and what we are taught in doctrine. We want to make a report unto the law. If you go to the Acts of the Apostles, there's no time to do that tonight. You'll find the same thing that after Paul and Barnabas had been sent out, they went on and they did the work. When they returned, they made a report back to the church what they had done. And it is this principle you are noticing here in Luke chapter 10. Now in verse 17 again. And the 70 returned. So then you understand that it is good to take inventory. When you have been given an assignment to be done by the church. And you are representing the body of Christ. And you are representing the Lord. You come back to the Lord every day. And you make a report of what had been done. Also at the end of the week, you return to the Lord. What have you done this week for the Lord? How has the work been done? Has it been according to the principles laid down in the word of God? And then once in a while, you look over what you have done in the kingdom of God. And ask yourself whether you are making progress or you are not making progress. And whether you are accomplishing what the Lord had given you to accomplish or not. Of course, at the end of time. At the end of life. At the end of your total ministry. You, have, you are going to have to give a report unto the Lord. For we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. To receive what we are done in the body. Whether good or bad. Now Luke chapter 10 verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy. The 70 returned again with joy. Well, praise the Lord, these did not return with defeat. Or with sorrow. Or with so many problems on their hands. Greater problems than the one they knew before they left. They had gone out to the field. And God had made them more than a conqueror. Over every sin that confronted them. Over every situation or circumstance that confronted them. They had also been able to minister effectively. Because the sick had been healed and demons had been cast out. They returned with joy. What you should be asking yourself is that as we return to the Lord at this particular time. You had been in workers retreat before and the lord commissioned you afresh and he said go and preach the gospel looking at the time between that end of the workers retreat and the beginning of this workers retreat and now you are returning to the lord how are you returning to the lord how many souls have been won how many disciples had been made how many people had been confirmed in the lord how many people have you counseled? How many have you helped? How many backsliders have you brought back home? How many victories have you won? How much can you say you have done between the last workers retreat and this workers retreat? Can you say you are returning to the Lord with joy for souls won, for disciples made, for converts that have been developed, for counselees that have been counseled, and for many lives that have been transformed. Are you returning with joy? He gave you five talents. How many of those five talents have you made use of for the progress of the kingdom of God? You have prayed for the sick. Have they recovered? You have cast out devils. Have those devils responded? Have they been cast out? You have preached the word. Have the people accepted the word you have preached? These seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. They made a new discovery in their ministry. They knew the power of the name of Jesus Christ. They knew afresh the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. They knew the lordship of Jesus Christ afresh. And they called him Lord. They had called him Lord before they went out. But now they called him Lord because they saw his lordship over the demonic spirits. They saw his lordship over circumstances. They saw his lordship over the sinners they went to preach to. They saw his lordship over everything that traced its head against them in their ministry. 
they said lord with a new understanding with a new appreciation and with a new meaning and depth of significance they said lord even the devils the word even is put in there to say other things bowed the knee other things submitted and succumbed and we overcame every other thing and not only every other thing even the devils apart from all the other things we can speak about even the devils are subject unto us unto us believers unto us disciples unto us workers unto us the people that you sent out unto us the people that lacked nothing of your power of your provision as we went out even the devils were subject unto us through thy name and now jesus added to the testimony it is wonderful when you give a testimony to the lord of your own ministry of everything that you have done for the glory of the lord and the lord says yes to everything and he says but there is still more and he said unto them i beheld satan as lightning fall from heaven he said while you were away i beheld even satan the prince of devils the master of those demons i beheld him fall as lightning from heaven and then he now gave them greater power greater authority he said behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions i've seen many so-called christians coaching that verse 19 and claiming that verse 19 of course you know that it's much more than claiming i've seen in my lifetime a lot of christians claiming promises that do not actually belong to them and of course you know that the promises are not fulfilled they are never never fulfilled on them because it's actually not meant for them before you can coach this verse 19 you must be able to uh, coach verse 17 you must be among the people that went out among the people that faithfully declared the word of god among the people that are faithfully proclaiming the gospel among the people that are faithfully doing what the lord has said to do among the people that are reaching out and preaching repentance unto the people that need to repent among the people that are not yielding your life to the devil because you cannot be a slave of satan and a master of satan at the same time you cannot be a slave of sin and a master of sin at the same time and therefore before you claim verse 19 you ask yourself are you really born again are you one of the 70 are you one of the people that have gone out two by two and you are preaching the gospel faithfully to the people that need to hear the gospel preached not only that look at verse 19 itself behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions those who are sitting still they cannot tread on serpents and scorpions those who are idle those who are folding their hands those who are closing their mouth those who are standing still and doing nothing those who are like mirrors of judges chapter 5 verse 23 who do nothing to help in the work of the lord those who are lazy it is only when you are walking in the path of duty when you are walking in the path of responsibility that you will be treading on serpents and scorpions actually what the lord is saying is this in those days the roads were not all tarred there were bush paths that linked village to village bush paths that linked a city to a town and as these people the 70 was still going to continue in the work of the lord they'll be walking in the path of duty there might be serpents there might be scorpions on the way because they were walking with their feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace how beautiful are the feet of them that preach glad tidings these people that were 
uh, very hard working and they were treading in that part of duty they were the people to be treading on the serpents and scorpions not the people that are lazy not the people that are doing nothing not the people that are not working for the lord so this verse is not for the one that is uh, on the rocking chair at home only singing amazing grace but the people that need that grace they are out he will not stand up and go and preach to them they are on the streets he will not get up to go and preach unto them this verse cannot be for such people but for the people that are up and doing the people that are willing to spend and be spent that are willing to give up the very last ounce of their energy to preach the gospel that's the group of people jesus said behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy these are the people that are confronting the enemy the people that are preaching the gospel the people that are taking on a combat a conflict with the enemy a warfare against the enemy these are the people that jesus said i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against that church i am building if you are part of that team if you are part of the people that are up and doing if you are part of the people that are serving the lord and working for the lord then he says i give you power over all the power of the enemy then he said and nothing shall by enemies hurt you you see when he said and nothing shall by enemies hurt you he meant while you're on duty while you're serving me while you're working for the lord while you're preaching the gospel while you are evangelizing while you are encouraging the people under persecution while you are visiting those churches again to strengthen them and to develop them while you are doing that don't be afraid of anything they will fight against you but they will not overcome nothing shall by any means hurt you now in verse 20 notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven in this verse 20 we have two things we need to take note of number one a rebuke number two a recompense number one a rebuke a rebuke on these 70 people that went out because they were misplacing the very foundation and the very source of their joy number one it's a rebuke on the pentecostal church at large number one it's a rebuke on the present day deeper life bible church number one it's a rebuke on the so-called workers of deeper life bible church of today look at it notwithstanding in this rejoice not the lord was telling the 70 that returned and all they could see is that oh lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name and jesus said that is even nothing i beheld satan falling as lightning from heaven and then you could jesus could see the expression on their faces oh you did wonderful thing happened like that we only saw that the devils were cast out we only saw that the power of witches and wizards and sorcerers and um, necromancers and all these evil things we saw that they bent low under our ministry when we mentioned your name so you saw satan even fall as lightning the lord could see the joy the expression on their faces and as a rebuke he said notwithstanding in this rejoice not that's nothing in comparison with your name being in the book of life don't misplace your joy what causes joy among believers is not healing it's not physical miracle it's not casting out of devils it's not even satan the prince of devils falling as lightning 
that is nothing because if you cast out devils and your name is not in the book of life you'll be lost forever and ever i said it's also a rebuke on the pentecostal church of today the pentecostal church of today spends all their time casting out devils and praying for the seed and all their meetings are centered around healing the sick and casting out devils and there is no portion of their time giving to the salvation of soul and giving to overcoming sin and giving to developing the holiness of life in the believers and there is no time giving uh, for people to study the bible to become sound and solid in the work of in the word of god it's a rebuke on the pentecostal church because jesus the head of the church is saying notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you i also said it's a rebuke on the present day deeper life bible church a great rebuke on the church of today the deeper life of today it surprises me that sometimes when you see a group of a deeper life people the crosses they sing the testimonies they share the expectations they show the prayer requests they give everything is centered on either healing or casting out devil you find out today that no matter who that member of deeper life is either a bad dream is worrying him or a witch is tormenting him or a wizard is hindering him or there is uh, something crawling over his body or there is something that is uh, eating his intestine, or something is happening to him that makes him to elevate healing the sick above salvation that makes him to elevate and exaggerate casting out devils above uh, holiness and it's a rebuke on the present the deeper life that notwithstanding in this rejoice not if i were to come here tonight and I were to bring testimonies from this state and this state and this state where this crusade was held and this happened, you would say it was a wonderful workers retreat we had. And I would say it was a bad, terrible workers retreat we had. If our joy is based on people are getting healed and people are getting delivered, I were not be seeing people saved and we're not seeing people sanctified and we're not seeing people consecrated and we're not seeing people who are able to endure persecution then i say it's a bad church that we're developing and so jesus christ is rebuking this church deeper life and it is and the lord is saying notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto your leader or the spirits are subject unto your coordinator or the spirits are subject unto the prayer warriors or the spirits are subject unto the house fellowship but only rejoice in one thing that your name is written in the book of life i also said it's a rebuke on the workers of deeper life today and it still surprises me how this church has changed so quickly i was uh, last saturday i was uh, coming uh, from one meeting in one stage and I passed through another stage where I just finished meeting about three, four days before, before passing on to that other stage. And because it was their workers' meeting, and I was going to be there that Saturday before traveling back to Lagos on Sunday, I decided that I would see their church premises and see what they were doing there. And their workers happened to be around and so eventually i got to them and they were happy i was there and we just finished the meeting and many things happened in those meetings that i felt that no worker or nobody had any problem left and i was just to greet them and i was so tired and worn out that i took permission from them to sit down in bringing the greetings to them and so i greeted them and I even managed to still pray with them. And then I got into the vehicle to get back to where I was lodged that night. Then to come to Lagos the following morning. I was surprised those people trooped out of their workers' meeting. 
I had entered into the car and the car was moving already and there was one man there a worker and he you know got himself on the vehicle and then there were many of them began to shout and not they were not shouting for him they were shouting for an opportunity to touch the vehicle and I looked at them I said these are workers we had just finished crusade we had just finished retreat and I just spoke to them and I just prayed for all of them and they were all rushing to touch the vehicle I said Jesus must have a lot of rebuke for these workers and the same thing uh, for those of us who are here in Lagos for us to become so solid believers and solid workers that we understand that casting out of devils is nothing healing the sick is nothing physical miracle is nothing it's nothing to be compared with your name written in the book of life in heaven that's why i say that this verse 20 is a rebuke for church workers today even workers of deeper life and even when the prayer was being led tonight i felt a little bit disappointed because the person leading the prayer was you know emphasizing the kind of prayer the pastor will pray for us as we come here i said that's not why we're here if that's why we're here you can go back home we're here for workers retreat we're not here to solve personal problems in fact myself i even need more prayer than you need but i'm not asking for prayer i've been down myself some of the messages uh, where i went to have the meeting i couldn't even preach some of the messages myself i couldn't stand up at all because uh, the activities and the things were too much and i'm not looking for sympathy or anything i enjoy it i should you know keep on working like that till i die at my post so it's not for sympathy but the point is that uh, i was so sick myself that i couldn't even uh, take some of the messages and in some of the places they even had to uh, do it with cassette and yet you'll be surprised that uh, when it comes to the evening to come to the crusade and then i will leave where i was and after leaving the place where i was uh, then get uh, on the pulpit and then begin to preach the salvation message and uh, when my strength runs out not that i'd finished the message but the people didn't know it was just as my strength ran out then i would say now i'm going to give the altar call and he lot so glorified himself that the people rushed and you know they got saved and all that and then i would sit down and maybe drink either warm water or whatever it is and uh, while sitting down taking the names of those people uh, the people will be getting ready for prayer i didn't even remember to pray for myself even though i was so very much down and then i would after they have spent time taking the names of those people then i will say now it's time to pray for those who are sick and i was so weak myself that i'll not be able to pray long prayer so i would simply say now if you are blind if you are lame if you are deaf or whatever it is uh, don't wait for long prayer they thought it was you know my style they didn't know it was uh, you know the weakness and so we will pray and uh, while they are still shouting because of blind eyes uh, opening and all that i sneak out and go and lie down again but i didn't worry about that because uh, what's what you have to do is to serve the lord it's not to get this or get this or get this or get that and i'm surprised that those of you can shout and jump you are still you know looking for prayer nobody should look for prayer here i'm the one to be looking for prayer now you understand but i'm not looking for prayer though this workers retreat we are here for workers retreat and as long as i'm able to stand i'll give you the word that god has for you and i believe that every one of us will be transformed in jesus name then it's a rebuke on the church that is concentrating on give me this one give me this one give me this one i think we should become so matured and we be, should become so developed that we should realize notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you that's a rebuke now the recompense 
the, the recompense or the reward or the recommendation or the, the, the good thing that God Jesus said about these people. He said, rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. If there is anything that should be a concern to you, it is the very fact that your name should be in the book of life. And if your name is already there, then he's telling you that there is nothing to worry about. If you happen to have a little weakness in your body, it's nothing to worry about. If you happen to have persecution, it's nothing to worry about. If you happen to have some delay in having this or that in your life, it's nothing to worry about. Once your name is written in the book of life in heaven, it says that is the greatest reason for joy in your life. Now, this tells us something very seriously. If devils being cast out, Satan falling as lightning, is not to be compared with your name reaching in the book of life in heaven, then you realize that we Christians of today, we need an orientation, a change in our attitude. Now, as you think about the Christian life, you will think about many, many things that are much, much less than the victory that these people had here. Obviously, if somebody bought a new cloth, that's less than spirits being subject unto you. If somebody built a new house, that's less, much less than the spirits being subject unto you. If uh, your child just passed into university, that's something much less than the spirit being subject unto you. If you have just discovered God's will in marriage, that is nothing in comparison with the devil falling as lightning from heaven. Or if you have just wedded, that is nothing in comparison with uh, the devil falling as lightning. If you have just delivered children, it is nothing in comparison. Whatever you have got in this world, it is nothing in comparison with what these disciples had experienced. Something is very important here. What the Lord is saying is that the joy of many Christians is that they have bought new clothes, they have built new houses, they have got new cars or they have just discovered the will of god in marriage or they have now got marriage or they have just got children or their children have entered into university and that is the only thing they can talk about and they talk about it everywhere they go do you know that my child is now at the university jesus said what does that matter in that rejoice not even when you see satan falling as lightning in that rejoice not when you have just delivered children it is nothing in this rejoice not if your name is not written in the book of life in heaven you've got to be very sorrowful but if your name is written in the book of life in heaven then there's nothing to be sorrowful about and there's nothing nothing to rejoice about either the only thing that should cause joy in the heart of the believer is that your name is still in the book of life in heaven because it's one thing for the name to be there uh, to to be written there originally it's another thing for your name to remain there even until now let's become serious christians solid christians don't change uh, this church to a bread and butter christian or to a healing church or to a miracle church if God gives us the miracles, wonderful. But then, don't let us rejoice too much on that. All those miracles may be taking place and people may be yielding to temptation. They may be living in sin. Even the people that are praying and the sick are getting healed. If they are not careful, if they are not continuing their quiet time, their family devotion, they are reading of the word of God, they are resisting temptation, they themselves may be falling into sin. But the thing that causes joy in the midst of real believers is that not only that you are casting out devils, not only that the sick is getting healed, but the fact that your name is still in the book of life in heaven. Let's look at point number one, record of our deeds. You see, all that we do is recorded in the books of the Lord. In Revelation chapter 20, 
reading from verses 12 and 13. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. That tells you very clearly that all our deeds, all our actions, they are written in God's own book. Actually, your name is either in the book of life or in the other books. Those other books is a book for humanity. It's a book for the generality of people, for mankind, for the people that are just living. And everything you do is written in that other book. All your actions, all your evil thoughts, all the bad, bad things that you cover up. All the things that you think that the leadership of the church may not know. Or if you are a leader yourself, all the things you think that the followers, the members of the church may not know. And you are just living in sin. And yet you claim to be a leader, a worker, a preacher in the vineyard. All those things are being written down. And whatever they are, the Lord is going to judge according to all those things that are being written down. Because he knows our lives. He knows our thoughts. He knows everything that goes on in a family. There are those who may lock the door and beat up their wives seriously. And then they will tell their wives, if you tell the church they're going to discipline me, you will suffer for it. Your wife may not tell the church if she doesn't want you to get to heaven. If all your wife is looking for is that you keep position in the church, your wife may not talk so you can keep position, but you will perish. You will go to hell. Because all those things are reaching down. Or it may be that you are unfaithful in your place of work. You are stealing. Although you call yourself a leader and a worker. And then there may be some members of the church in that place of work. And you may call them. And you may say, this is place of work. This is no church business. If any of you will go to our church and report me to the leadership. Well, you are playing with your job because you must know that I can do and undo in this place. You can do and undo in that place, but at a great white throne judgment, God can do and undo. He will meet you there too. You can do whatever you want now and you can silence those people and say, if you go to report me, you will see what will happen. But you see, everything that you are doing, all the fraud, all the stealing, all the evil, everything is reaching down. And that's why the Bible says your sin will definitely find you out. Numbers chapter 32. Numbers chapter 32 verse 23. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord. And be sure your sin will find you out. Do you remember that Moses was talking to some who were part of the commonwealth of Israel, part of the children of Israel? These were not outright backsliders. These were among the people of God. They were given a promise that they will stay on this side and yet they will follow the other children of Israel to take the land of Canaan. And then Moses said, he might not be there at that time. He might leave. He might have gone on to his own reward. And even though Moses might not be there, he said, if ye will not do so in my absence, then behold, you have sinned against the Lord. What's your promise in the presence of the leader? If you do not do it in the absence of the leader, you have sinned against the Lord. What you promise when we are all together in a workers retreat like this, then when we have dispersed and gone to our various districts, if you do not do them, you have sinned against the Lord. What you promise when we were at the Congress, you will stand with the word of God, you will stand by the word of God after you have been on your own. If you do not stand by that word, behold, you have sinned against the Lord. 
and then it says be sure your sin will find you out because actually the eyes of the lord run to and fro to behold both the good and the evil in proverbs chapter 15 proverbs chapter 15 verse 3 the eyes of the lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good he knows what you do he sees you in the vehicle he sees you on the road he sees you at home he sees you with the district church he sees you when the believers are with you he sees you when the believers are not there he knows everything that you do and he says his, his eyes behold all the children of men is beholding both the evil and the good if you are living in sin it means that actually your name is not in the book of life and i'm believing that during this workers retreat you will check up on where you stand and how you stand if your name is not in the book of life you will check up so that you will not keep on deceiving yourself until the trumpet shall sound in exodus chapter 32 exodus chapter 32 verse 32 yet now and i will forgive their sin and if not blot me i pray thee out of thy book which thou hast written and the lord said unto moses whosoever have sinned against me him will i blot out of my book here is what every sincere believer realizes you see when you are a real sincere believer you are not doing whatever you do because of the fear of the pastor or the fear of a leader in the church you see there are people that take some leaders in the church as a policeman and even when their policeman is around then they will be hurrying to do what appears to be right but when the one they take as policeman or their CID is not around, then they do as they please. But you see, whether people are there or not, if you live in sin, your name is going to be out of the book of life. If you say, because uh, brother so-and-so is not there, let me tell a little lie. Because so-and-so is not there, let me fight because so and so is not there i'm at liberty to get angry and to do whatever i want because so and so is not there i'm at liberty to commit immorality because the person i'm committing this sin with um, herself knows that it is part of her weakness and therefore she is not going to report and since nobody is going to report we can do it quietly privately here your policeman is not here but almighty god is there and the moment you go into fornication no matter your talent no matter your ability your name goes out of the book of life you may still be a figurehead called a worker you may still be a figurehead called a preacher or whatever but your name will not be in the book of life because god himself said in verse 33 whosoever has sinned against me whosoever means god is no respecter of persons it's in the days in which we live that we find people not holding very seriously to their christian conviction it's in the days in which we live that you find that even people who are referred to as pastors they are not avoiding sin because god hates sin but because what if they are members here and if they feel their members are not going to hear then they go ahead and live in sin and commit sin but to see god is no respecter of persons moses said oh lord all these people have committed sin but please forgive them if you are not going to forgive them blot me out of the book that you have written and god says it doesn't work that way it doesn't practice things that way if you have sinned of course there is no moses that is so exalted before god that god becomes partial he has to blot out his name 
out of the book. But if he had not sinned, then God said, I cannot do that. I cannot blot out your name if you have not sinned. If you sin, of course I will. Then he said, Whosoever have sinned against me, whosoever, an Aaron, a Moses, a G.S., whatever, God is no respecter of persons. When anybody commits sin against the Lord, when I talk about sin, I'm not talking of uh, you come late to this meeting. That's bad, but that's not the sin we're talking about. And I'm not talking of uh, when you are tired, you are not able to do what you have been told to do. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about immorality. We're talking about stealing. We're talking about the sin that you are told in Romans chapter 1. That it says, you know that whosoever committed these sins is worthy of death. And if you don't only do that, but you have pleasure in them that do it. Now, if you live in sin like that, you commit any sin like that, then your name is out of the book of life. And it is going to take real repentance before your name can come back into the book of life. And as we come to this workers' retreat, you'll need to check up on your own life. Because really, who knows the last workers' retreat we're going to have before the coming of the Lord. And who knows the last one you are going to attend before you are called to the great beyond. People younger than yourself have died. And people who are older than yourself have also died. Therefore, you can be called away from this place, especially if you are a sinner. Especially if you are a secret backslider. Especially if you are not living according to the word of God and you are not sincere with the word of God. Who can promise you life when you are living in sin? You can be called away from this place anytime. That is why you need to check up on your own life. Because God said, Whosoever have sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. The question is, when was the name written originally? That leads me to point number two. Written names in God's book reaching names in God's book when you realized long ago that you were a sinner and you wanted to know the Lord you wanted to be a child of God and with sorrow of heart with genuine repentance you turned away from your sin and you received Jesus as your personal Savior it was at that time your sins were forgiven at that time you became born again at that time you became a child of god it was at that time he wrote down your name it was the mercy of god it was the grace of god it was the love of god that caused him to do that and then if you remain faithful to the lord if you remain walking in the path of righteousness if you remain very careful that you will not go back into sin either this way or that way then your name will remain there Luke chapter 10 again in verse 20 Luke chapter 10 verse 20 notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven these people's names had been written in heaven at the time they were born again at the time they turned away from their sins at the time they believed on the lord jesus christ and yet they were not the only people having their names in the book of life god continued writing names as people were turning from sin and believing on the lord philippians chapter 4 philippians chapter 4 verse 3 and i entreat thee also true yoke fellow help those women which labor which labored with me in the gospel with clement also and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life you see the important thing here when paul the apostle was going to talk about these people he said these ones whose names 
are in the book of life. How could Paul know that? He knew that by inspiration. He couldn't know that ordinarily. And you cannot know that, that somebody's name is in the book of life. You cannot say, I'm sure there is a brother so and so here. His name is in the book of life. And you don't know their secrets. You don't know the things between them and the Lord. You don't know how faithful or unfaithful they are. You don't know how they might appear to be Christians publicly, but inwardly and privately, you don't know what they practice, so you cannot be very sure. But Paul, the apostle, was very sure because he was inspired in writing what he wrote. If you are inspired like him, if God opened your eyes like him, if God touched your heart and made you to see very clearly, you might be able to know. But inspiration in writing the Bible, you know, is different from illumination in just being able to preach like you and I are preaching. But Paul knew that these ones, they were fellow laborers and they were fellow workers with him. And he happened to know that their names were written in the book of life. And it is on the basis that you remain an overcomer. You remain a really true child of God. That your name will remain in that book of life. If you don't remain an overcomer day and night, week after week, nobody can promise you that your name will remain in that book of life. In Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Reading from verse 4 and verse 5. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, and I will, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. If we remain overcomers, temptations will come. If you remain an overcomer, persecution will come. If you remain an overcomer, conflicts and difficulties will come your way. If you remain an overcomer, whatever the devil may throw at you, and whatever the weakness of the flesh may suggest, and whatever the pride of life and the lust of the flesh may suggest, if you remain an overcomer, he that overcometh, that is the one whose name will not be blotted out of the book of life. And those are the people that eventually will be rewarded. Let's go to point number three. Reward of faithful workers. Reward of faithful workers. The Lord wants us to be faithful. And as you come to this um, retreat, it's very important, as I told you earlier, that you should not be looking at, what do I get from the Lord? If you look at your New Testament very well, you will see that the workers of the New Testament church were not selfish Christians. They were not people that were always asking the Lord, what will I have? What will you give me? What am I going to receive? What am I going to gather in this meeting that I have come? The workers in the New Testament were the people that were even saying, I wish myself were a cost for Christ, for my brethren in the flesh. They were concerned for the salvation of others. Except believers and except workers are concerned about the salvation of the people that are perishing. How will the people be saved? If all the workers are concerned about, oh God, are you going to give me this? Are you going to give me that? How are we going to have revival? If all our concern is, I want to build a house, oh God, provide for me. I want to have children, oh God, do this for me. I want to have that, oh God, do this for me. If that is our concern, when will revival come? Well, but when you forget yourself, when you forget your need, when you know that you are here as representative of the church, and you want the blessing of the Lord to come on the church and you want to turn many unto righteousness that is the time the Lord will bring his blessing upon the church and whatever he thinks fit to give you then he will give you but not by demanding for it 
in Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12, reading from verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. The people that will escape the great tribulation that is coming upon the world. The people that will escape that time of great terrible suffering coming upon both Israel and the world. They are the people who will be found written in the book. In verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. They that turn many to righteousness. They that turn many to righteousness. Those are the people that will shine forever and ever. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. From verse 16 then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another and the Lord hearkened and heard it and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name the Lord wants us to fear him and to think about his name and to speak one to another, admonishing one another to remain with the law. Only then will he write a book of remembrance concerning each of us. Tonight, as we begin the workers' retreat, not a general retreat and not a crusade, as we begin this workers' retreat, you should think about your life. Are you still standing in the Lord? Are you still a real child of God? Or have you really backslidden and gone away from the Lord? Let's come back to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire it's one thing for your name or my name to have been in the book of life long ago but as you look at your life much water has passed under the bridge many temptations have come your way have you remained an overcomer or have you fallen into sin remember god is no respecter of persons and remember even if you are sick and the lord were to heal you the healing will not take you to heaven and casting out devils will not take you to heaven and the lord has told us already and is still telling us and will forever continue to tell us that even when devils are cast out in that rejoice not but find out if your name is in the book of life if your name is there then you can rejoice but if as you look at your life tonight and the spirit of god is saying how can your name be there don't you know what you have done don't you know how you have disappointed the lord don't you know how you have lived in blatant flagrant sin how can your name be in the book of life then you know that if the judgment should happen today you will be among those people not found reaching in the book of life you realize it is not preaching that keeps our names in the book of life i just told you now that i've returned from some states this year alone i've now covered 20 states but that doesn't keep my name in the book of life 
I could go to 40 states if there were 40 states. I could go to 50 if there were 50. That doesn't keep my name in the book of life. Only one thing, that you are living an overcoming life. And whatever you have done in the kingdom of God, whatever it is, that doesn't keep your name in the book of life. The question you should be asking yourself tonight, although I see a lot of you sleeping, but there will be no sleep at the gate, at the border of hellfire. If you don't consider it tonight, I see many of you appear as if you are tired. We should stop now so you can go and sleep. Are you going to sleep tonight without finding out whether your name is there or not? Judas was there before. Demas was there before. And a lot of other people were there in the book of life before. But before the roll call happened, their names had departed from the book of life. The question I want you to consider tonight, don't let the devil cheat you. And don't let the devil give you sleep that you just feel, well, I'm tired. I cannot think about it tonight. Think about this because it will matter in eternity. If you have found not in the book of life you're saying oh lord remember me i was a worker in deeper life they will say what is deeper life if all the people in deeper life if they backslide and go into sin no single name from deeper life will remain in the book of life if your pastor standing before you here tonight if he goes into secret sin I'm telling you that God is of so much pure eyes that to build iniquity. He'll have to remove my name out of that same book of life. Is my name there tonight? Is your name there tonight? You rise up and you tell the Lord. Because if your name is not found reaching in the book of life, then you will be cast into the lake of fire. Where do you stand? My being a pastor does not put my name in the book of life. Your being a preacher does not put you in the book of life. If you are living in sin secretly, committing fornication secretly, committing adultery secretly, fighting, beating your wife secretly, using the belt on your wife, God knows you, God knows you secretly. He knows it. He knows it. If you are defiling those students, in the DLSO, he knows each. We cannot deceive God. If your name is not found written in the book of life, then it will cast you into the lake of fire. Whether you are a man or whether you are a woman, the best way I can help you, the best thing I can tell you tonight, is to rush back into the kingdom of God, is to repent afresh. Is to call upon the name of the Lord again. It's for you to retrace your step and say, God, I do not want to perish. I do not want to perish. Friends, healing will not matter on that day. Even sickness will not matter in that day. Poverty will not matter in that day. Prosperity will not matter in that day building houses will not matter in that day buying cars will not matter on that day having what you call the most beautiful woman on earth that's your business it will not matter on that day having children it will not matter on that day having gauge spiritual gauge it will not matter on that day the one single thing that will matter that your name is written in the book of life that your name is written in the book of life position i am pastor i am moderator i am coordinator i am zona leader i am women coordinator i am women representative it will not matter on that final day i am interpreter I am house fellowship leader. I am such and such, so and so. It will not matter on that final day. Even if I raised the dead, even if you raised the dead, it will not matter on that day. But is your name written in the book of life? 
if you sleep tonight it may sleep, it may be the sleep of judgment don't allow the devil to give you the final sleep a sleep that somebody never wakes from where will you be on that day you women are you living righteously in this church are you living pure you women are you living righteously or are you defeated overcome conquered by sin Christ the head of the church has a rebuke for this church the church that put holiness as number one the church that put sanctification as number one in the past but now the Lord is rebuking us saying that we rejoice only in healing only in casting out devils only in physical miracle we do not realize again the importance of having our names in the book of life now we rejoice in pride we rejoice in carelessness we rejoice in moral weakness let's come back to New Testament Christianity can you keep on preaching when you are weak and sick? When you lack promotion in the place of work? When there is not enough money? When some things you are looking for has been delayed? Are you so committed to the Lord and to the work of the Lord? That you do not care, you do not care? whatever it is you have whatever it is you don't have Are you concerned for the salvation of people in your locality? Can you do without praying for personal blessing? Can you be among the serious workers in this retreat? That will say, Lord, I'm not here to ask for children. I'm not here for, to ask for wife. I'm not here to ask for husband. I'm not here to ask for money. I'm not here to ask for health. I'm not here to ask for anything for myself. I want souls to be saved. I want souls to be saved. I want backsliders to be restored. I want the weak Christians to become strong. I want to be committed and consecrated to God. I'm not asking for anything for myself. I want the kingdom of God to be expanded. I'm here as a representative of the local church. And I want blessing for the people of God. Salvation for the sinners. Revival for the church. That's why I'm here. become a solid Christian a solid Christian who can obey the Lord as the Lord has said notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the devils are subject unto you 
Don't rejoice in that. Let your joy be the joy that your name is written in the book of life. The joy that you are living a victorious life. The joy that there is no fornication anymore. The joy there is no adultery anymore. The joy, praise the Lord, although I am poor, but there is no stealing anymore. The joy, there is persecution, but there is no anger. The joy, there is affliction, but uh, there is no backsliding. Let that be your joy. Let that be your joy. That your name is still written in the book of life. That the devil has come, but he has nothing in you.